What's going on guys? My name is Nate, and in the series of Red Tech videos, I want to cover the most common questions that I get asked during a camera prep. In part one, we'll discuss the physical form factor and improvements from the last generation, whereas in part two, we'll cover the UI and dialing in the general camera settings. Maybe a third, I don't know. Depends on if I can shut up or not. Here is a DSMC-1 body, Epic Dragon, and a DSMC-2, like the state-of-the-art weapon 8K Super 35 camera. The first thing that I'm gonna point out is that the bolt pattern on the bottom is exactly the same as the Epic Dragon. Two 3.8.16s and one quarter 20. It's also the exact same height from the bottom of the camera to the center of the sensor. This means that any plate riser combo that you use with the Epic will line up properly with any DSMC2 camera body. We've taken your feedback and moved the connectors from the bottom onto the modules, making them easily accessible from the side of the camera. Another notable difference is the cooling. We've moved the fan off of the front, away from that angry sound guy. There are now two larger fans pushing down from the top of the camera, exhausting it out of the back where the connectors used to live. The large fans on top allow them to run at a lower RPM, which means they're quieter, uh, and it frees up a lot of space on the front, making it a lot easier to break a lens free. Because this camera is so modular and fully configurable, when you show up to a prep, chances are you'll be looking at our camera with some kind of module attached to the back. Personally, I prefer the Red Bolt Expander for a few reasons. Number one is the size. Uh, it's got a lot more surface area, um, so you can Velcro or stick things on top of it. It also balances really nicely for handheld. It helps get that weight back. The second thing is connectors. No more double zero sync cable um, that used to have to try to get in there with the three BNCs. That's gone. It's broken out into full size connectors, uh, like five pin for time code, uh, power ports. It's also got multiple SDI ports. After that, you choose your flavor of Anton Bauer or V-Lock for the rear, attach the plate directly to the back, and you're good to go. Camera control. Now you can control the camera through any one of our touchscreen LCDs, the DSMC2 Sidekick, or with something like Full Control, which connects to the camera's built-in Wi-Fi. Now, with the DSMC2 Sidekick, every single camera menu is accessible through that, so you don't necessarily need a touchscreen, uh, but I find it to be a little bit faster. That Sidekick can be replaced with a cheese plate if you would rather use that real estate for mounting uh, something to the camera. There are two sets of pogo pads on the camera where you can directly attach one of the cableless monitors or the EVF mount pack. More often than not, you will be mounting the monitor to an arm. This is where LIMO adapters come into play. The LIMO adapter A attaches to the camera body and adapts the pad to our standard monitor port. The LIMO adapter B attaches to the bottom of the LCDs for those monitors without a LIMO port. I personally prefer the low profile hingeless seven inch LCD it's just nice and streamlined. One nice thing to point out about our new monitors is they do have the hardware to support flip and flop. So if you decide you wanna mount it upside down, you can easily hang the monitor. Okay, this last thing, this is very important, back focus. We have a new SPM, which is a sensor positioning mechanism. We've added the ability to physically lock the sensor into place. So the access point to adjust the back focus is now on the front and the bottom versus on top. And before you go ahead and make that adjustment, you need to remove the sidekick, and you have to look and check to see if the bolt is in the locked or the stored position. If it's locked, loosen the bolt, remove the plug, make the necessary adjustments in the front of the camera, then retighten the bolt. We've made the caps red, and a lot of rental houses are adding their own indication as to whether or not a sensor is locked. So that's, that's about it for part one. In part two, we'll touch on the basic menus and cover the most common settings. Uh, I would recommend downloading the Red Menu Simulator. It's called Donna. It's in the App Store for iOS. Uh, that way you can follow along. And it's a nice, free, handy little tool that allows you to get comfortable with the Red Menus on your phone. I'm gonna get out of here. Take it easy. We'll see you in a few.